I'm Dr. Joe Sabato. I'm an emergency physician at UMass Memorial Medical Center, and I'm here to talk to you about something that you can do to help save a loved one, a friend, or a perfect stranger's life, CPR, and how to use a defibrillator. It's the most common cause of death in the country, and we have an opportunity to save lives. Most bystanders, unfortunately, don't know CPR or don't do CPR, and that makes a difference in whether people survive. When someone collapses and they're unresponsive, they won't wake up when you shake them, they're not breathing normal, you call 911, you place the phone on speakerphone if you're using a cell phone, help is on the way, 911 operator can help you through the CPR instructions. But you start CPR while you're waiting for the 911 operator to ask you questions and answer the questions. You kneel beside the victim and place the victim on the floor if you can and you do CPR in the center of the chest. Push down two inches, you release. You do it at a rate of 100 to 120, the song Staying Alive, or Row, Row, Row Your Boat, or even Baby Sharks. Ask if there's a defibrillator nearby and send someone to get the defibrillator if you're in a place like a church or a um, <clears throat> store. CPR is hard work. If there are other bystanders present, you can have them take over for you by going across from you and taking over on three. If you are alone and need a rest, you rest. The only bad CPR is no CPR. So again, if someone collapses, you call 911, you ask if there's a defibrillator nearby, and you start CPR in the center of the chest, two inches at a rate of 100 to 120. Why no rescue breathing? Well, we found over the years that our oxygen is normal for six minutes if we collapse now. More people are willing to do hands-only CPR. It's easy to remember and easier to execute. Hands-only CPR is as effective as traditional CPR. Good Samaritan laws help protect bystanders to support helping someone when doing CPR or using a defibrillator. Again, sudden cardiac arrest is the most common cause of death. Only one-third of the time do bystanders do CPR before EMS arrives, and survivors come from those who get CPR. The only bad CPR is no CPR. So when the defibrillator arrives at the side, you want to make sure, again, following the same thing, someone collapses, they're unresponsive, place the phone on speaker, start CPR in the center of the chest, push down two inches, a rate of 100 to 120, that's the defibrillator. That's the universal symbol of defibrillators. The, C the continuous CPR until the defibrillator arrives. Then CPR is going. You know, place the pads on bare skin on the person's chest. One will be labeled for the right shoulder, and the other will be for the left side of the chest. And CPR is ongoing during this. And we hook up the cables. And we're still continuing CPR through this. And we plug the cables in and turn the defibrillator on. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. So we stop touching the patient, stop CPR, so it can analyze the rhythm. And then you restart CPR. Begin CPR. And the reason you restart CPR, because even if the defibrillator converts a heart to a normal rhythm, it takes about 45 seconds to a minute before the heart will actually contract, even though it has a nice EKG rhythm with that. In the meantime, if the patient wakes up, pushes you away, that's a good thing, you stop. But otherwise, you continue that. The defibrillator will tell you after two minutes if, and we'll reanalyze the rhythm, because sometimes it may take two or three shocks in order to convert somebody. Meanwhile, you keep on the CPR until EMS gets there and follow the directions of the defibrillator. But if someone gets, uh, collapses and gets defibrillated within three minutes, their chance of survival is 60% as opposed to 4% if we don't.
Another important thing to remember is that ha more than half of people who collapse suddenly have symptoms for up to a week before they collapse. They can be having chest pain, they can be having palpitations, they can be having new shortness of breath, they can be having new sweating and feeling dizzy or weak. If you are getting those symptoms, you need to see a doctor, go to an emergency room so that you can be evaluated for that because it could make the difference between life or death. The other thing to uh, keep in mind is that there are people who are at higher risk for cardiac arrest depending upon different factors. And that has to do with people over the age of 50, people with other heart disease, people with diabetes, high blood pressure, they are at higher risk and they should seek out getting CPR and defibrillator training in their community for themselves, their friends and their family because they're most likely to be the bystanders and can help save someone's life. Thank you.